Hey there, Ron Sullivan, your online hitting consultant saying, hey, let's train the athlete and let's build less robots, right? This is something that, you know, I really want to make clear with any time I give you a drill or I say, hey, here's a great drill idea that a lot of dads will tend to focus on the moving parts. Oh, well, your elbows are doing this. And, you know, we talk about elbow drag. That's why I always say elbows, right? The elbow drag is happening or your arm is barring out. I'm going to give you a drill that remember on the last video where we talked about um, the ball flight being our teacher. And this is a great example as Pete Alonzo is talking about his tea routine. I'm, I'm going to put this uh, link in the description box. It's great to hear his cage routine. Lots of great advice there. Um, but this, this, this uh, particular drill, I think, is perfect for players that have the wrong idea, uh, the wrong approach. So let's what we've said here on this channel over and over again is kids think that hitting is out, behind, and around. That's, that's their idea of hitting. And what they have to learn on a tee, right, is that we're working through space. That's what we're challenging our, our brain and our body to start to develop. And that's why Pete Alonzo said he works on this particular tee position. He says, I get inside pitches at times and I get a little spinny on it. So spinny to a big leaguer is, you know, maybe pull it, put it on the ground poolside um, or yanking a ball foul that should have been flying over the fence, right? And so he's working on staying through this. So the goal of this drill sounds simple enough. Hit the ball straight over the second base bag, right? Now it's harder than you think because it's really important that you set your player up here in this position that Alonzo is. And you see that his the T is sitting right on the black here. And obviously it's very far out front. You know, I don't know if you have to challenge a player with, you know, striding really big to this and get the same effect that Pete Alonzo is getting. But I would, you know, I would just make sure the T is inside, maybe belt high, right? And don't allow your player to naturally move away from the T too much. Right, because they'll try to find a position that's more comfortable. What we want to do is we want to treat this like it's an inside pitch. So Pete Alonzo is a big dude standing this far off the plate. It still feels like an inside pitch. Your kiddo is probably going to need to be somewhere close to the batter's line to really get the effect of this feeling. Okay, So the goal of this drill was very simple for Alonzo. He said, you know what? In order to um, stop myself from being too spinny, I work on things like this so that I can take this ball that's sitting inside and I'm gonna hit it straight back up the middle. Now if you, straight over the second base bag, now that sounds very simple, but that is difficult, especially for your players that have some longer, loopier casting, elbow draggy, arm barry swings, right? Understanding this approach is key. And the, and the reason why I said train the athlete is use this method with this drill, okay? Basically tell your player that this is how they're gonna do the drill. Look. I want you to take the good part of the bat and move, and try to attack through the seven. That's the only way you're going to be able to hit it over the second base bag. Now you have to think back to my last video, right? Where we were talking about letting ball flight be your teacher and the and a really good approach. We talked about it at some point that the the front side of the ball is the twelve o'clock side of the ball, close to the pitcher. The back side of the ball, close to the catcher, is at the six o'clock side. We're going to challenge players to try to feel like they're attacking the seven. Right now, you can do this. You can teach getting inside of the ball without getting a player focused on knob direction, hand direction. You know, this is when I think kids start looking really robotic. But if you if you give the athlete very simple instruction, hey, do you know where the good part of your bat is? Yeah, it's right there. Okay, good. I need that. I need you to move that as as short as you can through the seven because that's the only way we're going to get consistent ball flight over the second base bag from this tee position. So again, by you know, the first 20 reps your player takes at this, you're probably going to see some crazy bad results, right? We're going to roll over the ball, and you can say things like if they're putting it on the ground pull side, for instance, they're spinning around it or they're yanking it down the line here. That's not the goal of the drill, right? We're going to say, well, what part of the barrel, if they understand the clock illustration, what part of your barrel hit what part of the ball? And if they're smart and they hit a ball on the ground pull side, they'll say, well, I hit the top of the five. Okay, well, I need you to, it's very simple. I need you to take the good part of the bat through the seven. You will be amazed, okay, with a simple drill like this. If you use it as a tool for development and not a way to fix elbows and, and arm barring, you just say, all right, I need this ball. I need the athlete to figure out a way to put the good part of the bat on the right part of the ball so we get consistent ball flight right over the second base bag. Your player will develop barrel awareness, and also the, uh, the other end of that is mechanical awareness, right? Better approach equals better mechanics.
and we usually do this backwards. We try to fix the mechanics and then later on come back, oh, we, by the way, approach is this. No, fix barrel awareness, right? Have your player, and listen, I promise you this, after about, let's say, three days of going out and working on this, when you start seeing your player consistently putting the good part of the bat on the right part of the ball or getting the ball flight we're looking for, right? Put a camera on them, put a video on them, and, and maybe video them before you start doing this drill. And then just give yourself a few days to work on this and you'll see the patterns of movement are going to change significantly if your player is thinking about taking the good part of the bat to that short side. Right? This will help your player understand that my job as a hitter, you know, because everybody on the planet, you put a T out front and inside and way out front like this, they want to spin around this. Well, that's not what we work on when a ball's sitting still, right? We're working on staying back through this ball. So give your player that challenge. Hey, you see this frame right here with Alonzo. This is the so-called getting on plane part. That's not what this is, right? When a ball's sitting still, what we're doing is trying to learn how to get inside of the ball and stay through space. That's your job as the coach there is make sure your player understands that, right? So then later on down the road, when you have to focus on uh, biomechanical awareness and things like that, if you want to focus on what the pros do and all that stuff that people talk about, make sure that they have a good foundation, right, of making sure that they understand approach-wise, I should say, how to get through the zone, how to get through a ball. This is a great drill for that. All right.